Okay, so it's time for the talking again. So uh, I'm going to put a disclaimer <laughs> on the videos. I just don't. Um, I have an issue with looking at the camera, so I apologize. Anyway, let's talk about Helldivers 2. Um, I want to post a video once a week because I actually kind of enjoy this, as weird as it is for me to be doing it. Um, but I did not want to post about Helldivers 2 again. I mean, I think I had... I have a little list of ideas, and I think one of them is Hell Divers. The other ones are not. Um, but yeah, so I didn't want to make only videos about Hell Divers too. However, um, I have to make this one because I've never seen a game do what this game is doing. So I mean that in a couple different ways. The first way um, is the time timing of the news and the evolution of the story of the game so um reddit changed its apk whatever thing in the background allowed different apps to run off of um to pull data from reddit and basically run as a third-party app i used to use bacon reader um which doesn't work anymore so i don't use reddit on my phone i still use it on my computer but not on my phone i don't like the app the app is horrible it's horrible and terrible and terrible and horrible um i did join kbin which is a thing um but the reason i bring that up is because i don't know if, if this happens on every phone possibly maybe not apple phones but if you scroll right i guess um it takes you to a Google feed, which, yes, they're, they're searching all your information, what you post and all that stuff. Yes, whatever, whatever. I need content. So the Google feed I have, and here's what I find fascinating. Um, one of the things I find fascinating. So it's, you know, the, the, the Google story thing it has various um, stories on games that I'm in, interested enough to have clicked on. For example, Mass Effect, uh, Dragon... Uh, Dragon's Age, Dragon Age, um, there's a Mass Effect board game, Cyberpunk, like, just games that I'm interested in, um, and what's interesting is that there's apparently a Mass Effect board game coming, right, which is weird, but okay, um, and I've seen that story pop up a couple times over a couple days, um, and it's fine, right, that's the normal news cycle. It happens with all the other games. You'll see a story pop up, um, and you'll maybe see it, you know, once or twice over the next week or two, or whatnot. And it just makes the rounds. What's interesting to me, and that I've consciously realized, is that any sort of information about Helldivers 2 that's get, that gets posted in that feed is almost immediately out of date. Um, stories posted six days ago the 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 overall story of the game and the evolution of the game has moved on to an extent that you are out of date um two days ago you're out of date i, I don't think i've ever seen a game's story and or momentum move this quickly to the extent that even stories that are quote unquote fresh that are like two days old um, are highly likely to be out of date given whatever changes were that were just made to the extent that uh, we just got the major order, what, last night or the night before last? And literally, just before I hit record, 3.28 a.m., so it's 3.35 a.m., so, like, yes, that time, the new warband was, the new war bond was just posted. Like, it's already moving. It's already moved on. Whoever just wrote a story about uh, the, the new major order and is going to post about it tomorrow is probably already out of date. I, I don't think I've ever seen a game move with this much rapidity. It's just, it's fascinating. I, I just, it's fascinating that, you know, a news story posts two days ago, three days ago, a week ago. I mean, two to three days you have a shot. <laughs> a week ago you're, you're, you're out of date. And I, I don't think I've ever seen uh, a, a game's story evolve like this. There's like been you know, controversy about different games, and sure, that will dominate the, uh, the subreddit or the, the media content about that game while that, uh, controversy is going on, but, I mean, this is just literally just announcement after announcement after announcement, and I'm, I love it, but the other thing, um, that I noticed that last night, and I posted a thread on Reddit, um, 
that was swallowed into the mire of shitposting and memes and various bits of possibly correct information um, on the subreddit, which is fine, but I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up again, because it's something I would not or would not be able to track and or follow because I don't have the mindset for it. Like, I'm fascinated by it enough to bring it up and bring it to attention, but I know if it was something I tried doing and following myself at an ongoing pace, I would lose interest and fall out of it, uh, which would be sad because if I were being relied on to be the um, sort of repository of the information, it's highly likely I wouldn't be able to pull it off. So I'm not even going to attempt to be the person to bring to, to, to sort of follow this, but I, I do feel that it is worth bringing up um, in case somebody is like, oh yeah, this is something that I would like to do. So what am I talking about? All right. So it happened last night um, because the servers were kind of borked for a bit. Oh, I restarted. Do I still have that chatter? There it is. Nice. Um, the servers were kind of bored for a bit. And one of the guys I was playing was working on a troubleshooting issue. And so I was fascinated by a thought that I had and started trying to research it. Um, and found it almost impossible to find an answer. To the extent that I didn't actually find what little bits of information or answer... Uh, that we found, because um, it was me and two other guys uh, gearing up to play uh, the operation, which I'll hopefully get to as long as I don't forget it. Um, and so my frustration and inability to really find an answer prompted me to make a Reddit post. And while I was typing that, those two, who are fucking champions and heroes, uh, continued digging for the answer to the extent that they finally started uh, searching through the Discord to get the, to the answer that we got. So, what was the question? So, the most recent order, I think I posted it somewhere, so let's see if I can find it. I have, like, <laughs> it's funny because I have, like, two or three different channels, just little private things, nothing major. Uh, but I'm trying to keep everyone in the, in the loop for the, all the information, and it's just so many posts. Um, Alright, let's see. I posted it somewhere. I posted it in that chat. That's not a chat. That's there we go. And then da, 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 does it save? It did save. It did save. Fantastic. All right. Here's the um, major order we just got. Upon each barrier planet now stands a network of massive, of massive termicide dispensing towers, the terminated control system. Once activated, the TCS will exterminate every terminate on that planet and inoculate it against all future infestations. However, surges and surges in terminate activity have forced the SEAF engineers to evacuate. Now, only the Hell Divers can ensure the safety of our citizens. The terminate control system must be activated at any cost. All right, so that's the most recent um, major order we got. Um, and what caught my attention is the terminate control system. So I know uh, I posted in my first video that I joined up to Helldivers um, the, basically the day Heath was, was liberated. Um, I remember that being posted on the subreddit like right as I was getting everything up and running and settled. So I never actually got to play on Heath because they had been liberated that day and was clear. Now I did play on Angel's Venture, I believe is the name of the planet. Um, so I was part of that first major order. But back then, especially for any of us who, the majority of us who were coming to this game without any sort of understanding of the original Helldivers aside from maybe videos and memes and our friends telling us to come play it, um, it was a pointless mission. Like... You join the game, and there's this uh, major order thing going on, and it's like, okay, sure, I guess I can go for, like, you're not thinking about it, right? Especially with your first introduction to the game, which is fine. However, this specific major order also mentions the terminate control system, and my brain twigged on that because I only vaguely remember that initial major order also being about the terminate control system 
and I was like, my question and or thought process at the time was, is this the same mission? It's just, not that I'm complaining about it, because major orders are fun, but is this just a recycle of that first one that we had and that we did, just to see? Because I remember something about the terminated control system, um, and I know we were over in the bug planet, but I didn't remember more than that, right? Just I remember that title, we were over in the bug planet, and then my brain used to how almost every other game operates in regards to just recycling content or, you know, this is the, the this is this week's or this month's uh, target, so just do that. Uh, which is fine, right? This is, this is the gaming space, the gaming space that we're used to and basically how everything operates. But... <laughs> The first thing was that it was almost impossible to find that first major order. In fact, the boys, um, I don't even think they found it. They found, I think one of them did. I was reading it off, and like I said, those two are fucking heroes, because as I was typing up the Reddit post, they were still scouring for the information and had turned to uh, deep diving into the Discord to find it. Uh, but my basic understanding, given what they relayed, was that the first order, at least that one, and like I said, I joined the day Heath was liberated, so I'm fairly certain that was the first major order, but I can't be certain. But the order that they found, which I think is the first one, um, is not the same. The, the first order, and they, it was, they were talking, so there's no written record, and I never found it. But the first order they found was us uh, setting up the terminated control system. So that original major order when we were in Heath and when we were in Angel's Venture uh, was us setting up the terminated control system and now the major order is us turning on the terminated control system. So the story is evolving as we're playing which is interesting and I think more impactful than some might otherwise think about so how do I start this one of the first things that happened with some of those initial major orders is that they did not expect 400 800 a million of us to, to play the game so all of their timings and their estimate estimations and their um you know planning for how long these orders will take uh were thrown out the window um and that 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 did sort of they tried balancing it in a couple different ways or at least it looked that way i don't have specific information so this is just my analysis and thought process of it. Uh, but they tried in those initial couple days um, to figure out how to balance it while simultaneously dealing with the overwhelming influx of all of us coming in, uh, <laughs> absolutely uh, destroying their servers. But you would see stories about people running content on the planet and then you know the percentage of liberation would be at x y or z and then you know it would be reset overnight now they have since come back and said that it's sort of natural balancing and blah 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 blah, blah. i don't care right i'm completely fine with the concept of them looking to, uh, to figure out how to properly tweak their game for us um in those initial days when they were um <laughs> overwhelmed by the onslaught of far more players than they ever possibly anticipated playing. I, it's fine. I don't, I don't even care about that discourse. But what some of the things that I noticed as that balancing, uh, as theoretical balancing was evolving, was there was a group of, like, so they would play post a major order. Which one am I thinking of? Okay, one of the most recent ones where it was, like, defend a planet whose name I don't remember, but it's like the mech planet was being overwhelmed or something. That The major order was for us to run missions on that planet. Side note, I did successfully complete at least one operation on that planet, so I'm doing my part. Um, 
but I mean, we 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 pounced on it like hundreds of thousands of people all pounced on this singular planet to the extent that the CEO posted that we took it four times faster than they had uh, calculated, which is surprising, number one, just because you would have imagined they would have already dialed this stuff in. I'm not saying that negatively. I'm saying more that they were still surprised by how that sort of evolved. And I think I kind of have an answer for it, possibly, because um, it's like a space I find myself in. If there's... <clears throat> I put in enough time to hit 34, I think I am right now, um, and we ran an op on the planet last night, and I think I leveled up, so I, I yeah, I think I'm 34. Um, I have a decent amount of stuff unlocked, I'm not max level, um, I don't have all my ship upgrades unlocked quite yet, I still need pinks. Uh, my turrets are maxed, but I think I still have three more subsections to max out. Um, but I've put a decent amount of time in. How much time have I put in, actually? Probably not as much as other games, but still, I think something relatively respectable. Let's see. Helldivers 2. 133 hours. I'd say that's respectable. <laughs> um, and, and, but I've hit this weird, interesting... I don't want to say plateau... But I don't find myself... Well, I don't like playing with randoms, which I kind of been trying to force myself to get over, but... I really don't like playing with randoms. I play with, like, a group of guys, um, so we're used to each other, and I, like, invited a couple other people, and, like, I've trained them up. <laughs> like, I was like, no, don't do that, and this is what this means, go here, do this, and this is, like, I've, I've trained them up, so we work really well together. Um, and then I join with randos, and it's fucking... And I had, anyway, that's, that's just a story. Uh, I thought about, like, recruiting, going into, like, a look, looking for a group channel and, like, just, like, recruiting one or two people to, like, potentially play in a relatively established group. Uh, I haven't quite mm, done that yet. <laughs> but, eh, when those guys are on, yeah, well, I'll play at least an operation. But I find my brain spinning up to a pretty high, um, speed especially on higher difficulties just to sort of balance the entire combat scenario which is fine but it's okay let me let me let me let me circle back around and say it this way I'm not burnt out on the game but I do find myself not playing it however it sort of occupies a similar space in my brain as Star Citizen where this major order was placed posted and while I may not have played for the last day or two, because I'm just looking for a downtime game that's just kind of chill uh, in between the war, um, the second that major order is posted, I'm in. Like, I'm in. Like, we <laughs> we, we mounted up last night. Uh, we completed an entire operation. I think it was like on a five with just the three of us, which was three missions. Um, so we contributed. Like, the second that major order is posted, my brain's like, all right, we're going to at least one run a single operation to success. To, to participate, to, to, you know, be part of the community. And that's how it works. But uh, it's interesting because if you're looking at the numbers in that case, you know, the last two days I haven't, may not have logged in. So it looks like I might be a lapsed and or dead player. Uh, but the second you post the orders, the second I log in, um, which is, I'm assuming they were probably caught by something similar when they um, said that we cleared that planet four times faster. Just a thought. But, um, the other part of that is, you know, you've got com people complaining about, you know, we have this many people taking over the planet, so it should only last X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. And I get it, however, what I did see, and I don't know if it's sad, it's, it's kind of sad, at least to me, because remember, I, I will probably always regret the fact that I wasn't able to step foot on Heath for that first operation. I was part of Angel's Venture, I was part of the first major operation. Uh, but I think I said this in my first video, I never got to set foot on Heath. Sure, you know, as the war evolves and the story evolves, I might be able to go back, but I forever missed out on the, that initial experience. Now, 
the reason I bring that up is because I saw people on the forums um, that day and well not that day I think like the day after and we had cleared the planet like the, the planet was cleared and there are people <laughs> who are like I only get to work oh, excuse me I only get to play on like the weekends I got to work I got kids I got responsibilities I got XYZ all this stuff going on and the fact that we cleared it in like one to two days, they never even got to touch it. They never got to experience it. They never got to do anything with it. So, like I said, I will forever regret the fact that I never got to step foot on Heath. There are a bunch of people now who will probably always regret the fact that they were never able to take, never able to take part um, in the campaign that gave us the mechs that we're all using now. Uh, so I get why the devs would then try to figure out how to balance the system, um, you know, so that we don't just Hulk smash it in 24 hours, 48 hours, and everybody at least gets a chance to, to, to touch it. Um, which brings me to part of this post, or this video, uh, here. Uh, this is referencing a post I saw last night. Uh, posted by Slade underscore zero 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 on Reddit, and he says, "Yes, looking at this map on the website, uh, if we keep, if we keep a rate of four percent an hour, it will take us ten days to beat this. We have to focus down the planets one at a time, spread the word, go out to the other planets, tell them the word, have them spread it, get us all on Fenrir ASAP." Now, interesting note: one, I, the boys and I successfully completed an operation on Fenrir, so we did our part, uh, but also, Fenrir's been completed, so that message got spread out, and we responded to it. So this has multiple layers of interest. One, if you're looking at a, ten, a potentially 10-day operation, that means the devs have, at least to some degree, uh, begun to properly tune their major orders to the fact that there's so many of us playing, um, which is fantastic. It means that, um, yeah, that same dude at least won't, he may not be able to touch Fenrir, but at least he'll be able to actually participate in the um, major order, which is like how I feel about Heath, because at least I was there, right? I might not have touched Heath, but at least I was there for that major order, so that's great. Um, plus, it's multiple stages, multiple planets, um, so, you know, it's lasting a decent amount of time. Um, and that's good. It's good that the devs are learning how to balance towards how many of us there are, uh, because it's, it's just good. It's, it's a good balance, a good thing to see. Flip side of that is the fact that the community is also respond responding because you have this guy with the post and the percentages and that it will take X, Y, Z. And because of that, this is the kind of strategy that we need to do. So let's this be, this be the community strategy. It's fascinating that the community is starting to come together to also figure out how to properly tackle the challenges that are presented to us. Um, that's amazing. And the fact that we did it and the fact that Fenrir 3, as of right now, is fully activated, meaning you know enough of the community came together to actually do this is fascinating. What an interesting evolution of this game. Um, yeah, I've, I've never seen it. I've never seen a game. I know there's games uh, with living worlds like Guild Wars 2, which I've dabbled with. Um, I like the Mesmer and the Wizard, Mage, Sorcerer, whatever. is interesting when you have all of your abilities unlocked and go full ham and unleash everything in like 30 seconds. It's just a cacophony of sound and power. Um, and then there's the Destiny 2 thing, which again, I've bounced off Destiny 2, especially because they don't care about new players. Um, but I know that's like releasing patches, but this is different. This is different in a way I've never seen. Um, I don't know if other games have done this. I'm not aware of them if they have. Um, so for me, it's worth bringing this up. Um, for a couple reasons. One, I think it's pretty important for us to track these events. The fact that we spent 30 minutes, 45 minutes trying to just find that initial uh, 
made her order just to confirm because I vaguely remembered it said terminated control system and I was curious about whether or not it was a repeat and it took us so much time and and looking up Twitter looking up Reddit looking in side note the fact that if you search for something and you see Reddit and then you try to click on more results from Reddit the Google page doesn't return dates on it anymore so you have no clue when these things were posted so if you're looking for something at a specific time you can no longer search for it if there's a way to do that please let me know because that is one of the most frustrating things i've run into um but reddit twitter eventually having to dig through the discord just to find that initial order if the war continues to evolve like it is currently it we should have a record of it the fact that it took us so f much effort to try to find that first one. It's kind of scary. Because what happens a month from now, two months from now? What happens when the, the new faction is introduced? And this is just the Terminate side. What's, what about what's going on on the bot side? There's all these... If you play a game like World of Warcraft or you know any of the big MMOs that have all these content releases... Uh, or expansions what you notice and even with Final Fantasy 14 which is an amazing game uh, is the story you're kind of a spectator especially with like World of Warcraft right you're watching all the, you're like an intimate companion so you're there you're in the room but you're not the main characters the main characters are the NPCs that are you know leading their factions or leading the cities or having the big character moments and the turns and the storylines and the betrayals and the xyz's you are important enough to be in the room with them to be you know sort of there to be weaved into the story and sure you are the hammer that gets sent out to deal with the big bads that nobody else can can touch and or do anything with but you're not the main character of the story you're a spectator now I'm not going to say that Helldivers is different in that regard, because it's obviously not. Uh, Helldivers are... replaceable ammunition shot out of a ship. <laughs> like, but I think the average lifespan of a Helldiver is like two to three minutes. So it's not like we're main characters, but that's kind of... We're not the main characters, we are now the NPCs. So in other games, like World of Warcraft, you're the you're you are your main character. You're the player character. So you're the main character of your story, but the the story of the world is sort of orchestrated by, or acted out by, or carried out by the NPCs. These NPCs, who, like I mentioned before, the big important people, the VIPs of the world. We are now simultaneously replaceable meaningless worthless soldiers casually and callously tossed out into the forefront of, of, of war to survive two to three minutes but also simultaneously the NPCs who are building the tapestry of the story of the war in the background I'm sure there's a plan. I mean, there's Joel, who's like the game master. So I'm sure they have some sort of plan for the evolution of the war. But unlike these games, these other games, these MMOs that have these stories that come out, these expansions, these are us. <laughs> We're the ones running the missions. We're the ones coming up with a strategy to efficiently take down the planets to complete the major order. And also the ones who can fail the major order. I believe we failed um, the defense mission against the bots. So the question is, how does that story even evolve? How do all of these stories evolve? Because they're not, they may be planned, just like the dungeon master, 
in like uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. It may you call, you you go into it with the story, you go into it with a plan, you go into it with this is what I want to happen, and then characters come and fuck it all up. <laughs> but that's us. We are the characters now. We're the ones run, running the missions. We're the ones who sort of shape the flow of the war, depending on if we win, if we don't win, and potentially even more even more uh, um, um, variables than that. Maybe how we win. Maybe where we go first. Maybe all of these things have an impact. Possibly not, because that's asking for a lot. But even the fact that we can influence the story, uh, given whether we win or lose, and specifically, like, maybe we just win or lose a lot. Maybe we win a lot against the, the bugs, but lose a lot against the bots. How does that change the galactic landscape? Much less when the third uh, faction is introduced, how does that evolve? It will be another. Like, all of this stuff is going on in the background, and unlike the pre-written stories of, like, the expansions and MMOs, we're the background NPCs who are doing the things. That's... Who does that? Who else does that? Um... So, yeah, like, the fact that... And I've... I've I couldn't... I've, nobody's posted about this that I've seen. Nobody. <laughs> and I could barely find out. Again, I didn't even find it. The guys did. To see the fact that this is part two of the Terminant story, basically. And it's just so subtle. It's like, I don't... Again, I've seen nobody else mention this. What's part three? What happens next? What if we fail? Imagine joining this game. And so here's... So it's interesting uh, to bring up Destiny because... I was thinking about this on the drive home. <sighs> Destiny 2, when I went to go play it again, um, doesn't care about new players. At least it didn't when I went to go play. Like, you were literally dropped into the middle of the story. Just here. Just here. Here you are. And there's no explanation. There's no, this is what's happened before. There's no, here's where the story is now, and this is why it's important. Just here. You're just here. It's like... It, they don't care. <laughs> I've never seen a game disregard a new player uh, to the to the extent that Destiny 2 disrespected me trying to get back into the game after not playing it for a decent amount of time. Like, it did not care in any way, shape, or form that I was a returning player and was not caught up on the lore and the story. Um, it's just here's you're just lo you're just loaded in. You're loaded in like you're <laughs> you're a new character brought in on season nine of a show the end like and you're expected to be able to know what's going on and how to deal with it um to be fair destiny 2 is also the uh, game that has uh, been and or uh, removed <laughs> various uh, story content from the early years to the point that i can't even play it like you can't play it it's gone they've just taken it out so yeah they don't give two shits and given everything I just said about Helldivers 2, one may think that, oh no, Helldivers 2 may have that same sort of thing, but it's completely different. Because we're all replaceable NPCs. Like, if you join Helldivers 2 six months from now, the ongoing story will be completely different. I feel relatively confident in saying that. Especially seeing this already evolution of the story so far like six months from now the galactic landscape will be completely different and we'll have different missions and different goals and you may say well isn't that the same as being a new player joining destiny 2 but it's not because simultaneously we don't fucking matter we are literally the nameless npcs in the background running the war so when you join you will always be a nameless npc in the background running 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 the war and all you have to go on is the same thing that we have right now is this, just this major order that says go here and shoot the bugs and you will go happily go there and shoot the bugs and it will be completely fine because that's what the game is designed for now i could go off into my theory of um us actually being an overmind on the ship and all that stuff but i'm not going to touch that this time what i will say though is that that player six months from now that joins the game and goes off and happily gets <laughs> obliterated as they begin to learn the ins and outs of the system in the game while running missions on planet XYZ01 who's gonna have a good time it's gonna be fun 
and they're probably never going to think about the over, uh, overarching story and why that major order is there and what it took for that major order to get there. Like what uh, plans and ev evolutions in the storyline took place for the story to get to where it is. But I imagine if they, like me, saw something that triggered that little thought in their head that's like, wait a minute, this sounds familiar, what is this? It would probably be nice and or a good thing to have a record of the missions that we've been running so you can go back and see the story that we're all taking, play, uh, taking part in. I won't go so far as to say this is active history, because that's a bit of a stretch. Um, the game is doing phenomenally, as far as I understand. There's still people playing. There's still new players playing, um, which I love to see. The game is 100% worth all of that. Um, I will say this is living history in the gaming space. That I feel confident in saying if nothing else living history of helldiver this is the living history of helldivers 2 um, and helldivers 2 has had a noticeable impact on the gaming landscape to the extent that it is well on its way to establishing itself as a force um, and if they can keep this update like i said they just released the newest um battle pass right now <laughs> right before i hit record and I think they're planning on doing that the second Thursday of every month. It's a brilliant strategy, especially combined with the fact that you can earn all of the you can earn the currency in game, and that the battle passes never go away. So it's not so much about us, right? Like I'm perfectly content to spend money I don't need to spend on this game, uh, to buy a pack I don't need to buy, don't need to buy just to support them because everything they're doing is phenomenal and amazing i've never seen a company do it like this or a game expand and or grow and or live like this but if you're joining if you're that six months from now player i mean what how many battle passes does that give you six seven eight it doesn't matter right a decent amount and all of us who will have been here will be like it's completely fine because you can earn all of the content or all of the funds you need by just playing the game and playing the missions, which is completely true. But if you're that new player joining up six months from now, are you going to have the patience to do that? Probably not. You're probably going to see one or two things in a couple different battle passes, and you're going to pay to unlock it. Of course you are. Assuming you have the disposable funds to do so, of course you are. I've done that a billion times. It's 100% what you'll do. Um, and the rest of us will be like, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is play X amount of missions. Um, and they'll probably understand, and they'll probably go ahead and buy it anyway. And I think that's perfectly fine. And that's a brilliant way of doing it. <laughs> I completely support how they've implemented this, because it's great. And I haven't even finished the existing battle passes. Now I have to go look through a new one and see whether or not there's anything in there or if I want to keep, keep trying to max out the one I'm working on right now. Uh, but yeah, I've just, I've never seen a game evolve this quickly. Uh, a living story that we are all simultaneously taking part in um, to an extent that we actually influence it we influence the overarching story of the game in the extent that we can lose these major orders, and I think we've already lost one. So the flow of battle, the flow of the war, is literally impacted by you logging in and playing. It's not pre-scripted. Yes, there may be that DM behind the, the, the screen that has a, you know, I want to go here and I want to get the story here, but just like you can roll a 1, or just like you can roll a nat 20, you yourself influence the direction of the story. The story of a game being played by like a million plus people looks really good and continuously evolving and has a news cycle so fast that news articles I see posted two to three days ago have a high likelihood of being out of date. I've never seen this before. Um, <laughs> I've never seen this before. And then even just logging in and looking at that, um, the, the, the terminate turning on the system and the, 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 there was like a tower 
that was awesome and had like a giant bass sound like um, Inception and then was like spraying out. Oh god, it was fucking sick. <laughs> it was sick. This game is this game is literally insane. I've recruited so many people to play this and I feel zero guilt for it and I will continue to look for more people to recruit because it's so fucking amazing. And the story that's coming out of it and the rate that story is coming out of it, I've never seen before. Ever. And someone should be tracking it. I, do, I can't do it. I, my, I don't have the sort of brain that would let me sit there and track X, Y, Z. I can notice it. I can point it out. I can be fascinated by it. Be like, hey, this is important. Somebody should get on this. But if I were to try to track it, it would be sad because at some point my brain would be like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I wouldn't be able to force myself to do it. And then history and notes would be lost. So I'm not even going to try. Um, but I, I think it would be a shame if somebody didn't. So, yeah, I've never seen this. I've never seen this ever. And it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah.